G'day everyone, I'm the anti theocrat back with another one of these. Um, the window's open, you might hear birds outside. How exciting for you, huh? Anyway, um, I thought we'd cover a little bit of what the anti theocrat does with his life. Um, well, his life on social media. My life outside social media is just like anyone else's. Maybe a little bit different. Maybe a little bit weirder. But anyway, uh, I thought we'd cover my life on social media just a little bit to give an idea of what i get up to and what i'm doing uh, you're currently watching elephants at dubbo dubbo plains zoo it's a breeding facility and, and other things anyway as you can see desk full of screenshots all kicked up just for fun uh, this could be a tedious and boring one. I'm not going to read all of these comments, comments word for word either. I'm not that careful when I write them. I'm not going to be that careful when I read them. Um, the point is to get the, the message out, not to worry about how ungrammatical they can sometimes be. Okay, so the Women's March on Facebook. If faces were bleeding, someone would do something. Uh, if my comment at the bottom here, if faces were bleeding, someone would do something. Are you saying you want me to walk around shoving hands full of rags up women's vaginas to stop them bleeding? The other cure is holding it upside down and pinching it closed until it stops. Uh, yes, okay, so I can be flippant and cruel and a whole lot of other things with stupid people like the Women's March. Um... Uh, Moving on, this is from uh, an international anti-nuclear campaign group. Now, I have been an anti-nuclear campaigner since the 80s, and I'm not one of those freaks who's just scared of radiation. Uh, I worked in some terrible industries, and I worked around radiation, and I've done a whole lot of things other people think are dangerous and horrible, you know, environmental disasters and shit. Um, uh, so, yeah. I have a different uh, reason for not liking anti-nuclear, uh, not liking nuclear energy, but it has more to do with um, ancient technologies not developing, uh, and I don't want to get into that here. Anyway, uh, what does feminism have to do with nuclear policy? Well, my reply to that is, nope, get fucked, you've lost me, I'm out of here. I think I may, it may be my final, the final straw that breaks my anti-nuclear campaigning after 35 years. If you're going full crazy, I don't need you. Feminism is a cult, a religion based on a false premise. It has, a, has as little to do with reality of any situation as any other cult with a foundation in fiction. Feminism tries to make everything in its image, which is largely postmodernist wank about reality not being real. Where it has tried to apply itself to reality, it has failed with crap like the Duluth model, which didn't even have uh, a connection to the research done prior to it being penned. If this is how you plan to teach your uh, to take your activism, you're not going. You're not doing it with me. When you get creative, like feminists are, you undermine your own work. People don't take you seriously. They just see crazy people. Have you seen how people are responding to Extinction Rebellion? Feminists? Uh, feminism's success in society is not because it stands out as a brilliant shining light of wisdom, but due to the gynocentric nature of humanity and our will to put women and children first. Feminism's only real function in the world is to grow on movements like a cancer and turn them into something crap and meaningless in its image. I'm out. You've lost me. The idea of with the idea of postmodernism can solve anything is absolute crap. I don't believe I'm seeing this. It's like those f um, fake, that's meant to be, fake Fukushima radiation spread images created back in the day when we hadn't, f if we hadn't fought that falsehood, I would have given up then. Uh, and then I went on to say, now that you're allowing this one, I'm out. Upon which I left several uh, anti-nuclear groups, which I've been part of for years. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to skip this one and uh, read you this one, because it 
also had that. Uh, I left uh, many groups um, impact on my life. International Prodown Pronoun Day now today. It has a lot of resources linked. If you haven't spent much time around LBGTQA plus people learning about pronoun, pronouns, it's a great start to attending Polyvic events in particular. To which I commented, odd that all the LBGT people I know think this shit is fucking insane. If I need to know how crazy you are before I go to events, I guess I will continue to not bother. Upon which, uh, this bitch here, someone web, who I, I was polite enough to block her name, um, uh, block, um, managed to report me and get me a three-day ban on posting on Facebook. Very nice of the bitch. But when I came back, well, if I didn't feel like an outsider enough in this swinger community with my fidelity relationship and kids, some weak tard reported me. Apparently letting my position, my apparently blasphemous position, on the bullshit doctrine, an entirely crazy idea of everyone's pro uh, everyone announcing and everyone else remembering every imaginable gender and its pronoun at events was worth giving me a three-day block on posting. Thanks a fucking lot. I really love how you display your lack of argument. I felt like an outsider enough for some time now. Doing a Mardi Gras pretty much proved that I'm not the right colour of poly, not having kink or swinging. So, I will be I will finally be removing myself from all of the swinger group all of this swinger group and its associated groups and seriously fighting its bullshit gender politics that takes away from us discussing the legality of our relationships. While normally people while normally I wouldn't say anything, I wanted you to know your poly is not the only poly. In fact, I think most of you cheapen what I have. Most of you seem to be excusing swinging and not being able to hold down relationships with the value of my relationship. Not all, because apparently we have to say that. Yeah. Well, we've all fucking gone soft. Uh, P.S. Uh, yeah, I know. I'm risking being reported again. Soft people are like that. It used to be Christians who reported me for questioning their cult. It's a new cult doing it now, but it's the same methods. So, let's move over to this one, shall we? TheGuardian.com. Reese Witherspoon and Jennifer Anderson, Anderson, in, in, Aniston, oh, who gives a flying fuck. A lot of guys think every woman wants to sleep with them. Look, I don't even want to sleep with you two, but let's move on. Uh, a lot of guys want to sleep with actresses like them. Oh, sorry, this, I like this fellow's comment. That's why I left it and why I'm going to read it to you like them but honestly a lot of guys would be disgusted by the thought that all women would like to sleep with them this is a thought that i found predominantly in women these women simply took a thought prevalent amongst women and reverse agendas because that's just how it is okay my comment i think closer to the truth is a lot of guys imagine sleeping with a lot of women with little expectation of ever of it ever happening but women being oddities they are take every look from a man simply feeding his imagination to be an imminent threat or a serious approach women on the other hand seem to struggle with the idea a man may not want to sleep with them i for one was abused by a woman who would i wouldn't sleep with the ones who do realize it turn into feminist harpies whose only goal is to accuse all men of being predators. So, feeding the seemingly na na narcissistic mindset of those who drive the male imagination. So yes, as I pointed out, I wouldn't sleep with either of these women. I don't think they're that attractive. Reese's chin's always had an issue, and the other one, yeah, just don't, can't work that shit out. Um, dive into the back here. This is a green senator here from Australia. This is a rabid harpy. Uh, it's a feminist. Um, can I just call it a butch dyke? Because if it's not, it fucking looks the part. And this is a prat who runs an online survey group called 
um, what do they call themselves, change.org. So, change.org are calling to have someone removed from their job, apparently, he, on, on this image. But this bitch posted what this bitch said to social media. And then they all backtracked and tried to deny any connection because they realised they'd fucked up big time. Essentially, this this feminist bitch in the middle with the arrow up her nose um, accused firefighters of going home from fighting our fires this year, and we've had quite a few, of being uh, wife bashers. They're all going to go home and abuse their wives. The uh, study that she cited said nothing of the sort. But no problem. The Greens, they jump on board. So what happens? A change.org, this wanker here on the end, uh, a change.org petition is set up to have this bitch fired. And, you know, I'm not into this big chasing people down thing, but let's face it. Who gives a fuck anymore? The feminists deserve it because that's exactly what they've been doing to everyone else. So I'm not going to say don't do these things. Yeah, fucking give them. The only way we're going to stop them doing it to us is give, a sh give them a taste of their own medicine. Anyway, this guy's group set up a um, petition to have this dumb bitch's um, uh, job stripped from her. And when it got close to its goal, change.org, this asshole on the end, killed it. They deleted it. They blocked it, banned it, and got rid of it. Because change.org apparently only likes selling left less leftist messages. But these people are also part of a social group together. These fucking moron activists, these leftists, as we like to call them, and, I, and I'm a left-leaning, um, mildly progressive political person. I always have been. I don't side with these dumb fucks. I, I will never vote Green again. I did once, many years ago, when it looked like they had policies and were starting to look like a serious party. Uh, when I was moving away from my traditional voting platforms. But never again. Never, ever again. The Greens are fucking poison. Because they side with fucking butch dyke twats. And... They're male feminist partners, yeah, yeah, male feminists too, who, who needs more fucking sex predators in the world? Anyway, let's have a look at 1-800-RESPECT, shall we? 1-800-RESPECT is uh, Australia's premier um, go-to domestic violence um, hotline. It is government funded and supposed to be the go-to resource where you can find everything else you might need or get help. So, this is what they send out to professionals by email. Yes, I still have email accounts and I still receive emails. Sometimes it's handy. But, 1-800-RESPECT. This is the emails sent to professionals. And I receive these sorts of emails all the time. Uh, I did sign up as a professional. This month, we feature information about upcoming events during the 16-day activism 16 Days of Activism Against Gender-Based Violence Campaign, including information about 1-800-RESPECT directory. By the way, I've been doing research on this directory. Don't, if you're a male, be look, male and over the age of 12, don't go looking. It's not worth it. Oh, bloody hell. So, uh, yeah, sorry, that was my phone doing something stupid. I have no idea what it's doing. It's on silent. Thank fuck. Um, what do we got? So what? what's the sex... Uh, um, Gender-based violence. Does that... Um, any um, woman attacking a man, any woman attacking a child, any man attacking a woman or a child, you know, is this just one gender against another or whatever you know gender-based violence i've been violated by women um so where are we 16 days of activism against gender-based violence is an annual global campaign that runs from 25th of november to the 10th of december because you can't fucking run it long enough can you 
It aims to raise awareness and encourage action for the prevention and elimination of violence against women and girls. Yay! And of course, they've got a, uh, a, a toolkit. They've got an escape bag for women and they've got a 16 day toolkit on their website. Because this is the 1 800 Respect Feminist uh, Support website. That is federally. Um, funded there is no um, site for men just for that just for the record in fact there is no federally funded assistance for men at all there is a mob called men's line and i was going to actually cover them here but i'll tell you what they've straightened up their website a lot it looks a lot more positive now but at the heart of their services they are run by a feminist organization and they sell the principle that men are always perpetrators and they require um, behavior changing services. That's their primary service for men. They do on their website now say that, you know, men can be victims too and we want to help the men who are victims. But in this country, uh, that's a crock of shit. There are no services for men. Uh, the nearest you've got is dads in distress and I will... I will support Dads in Distress. It's the only group at this time that I will definitely give my time. There's a privately run mob in Queensland somewhere, Joshua House, I think they're called. They also get my support, but I know very little about them. I've had chats with Dads in Distress, and if you want to chat with a guy on a phone who might have some understanding of the situation, it's not their primary business, but they'll give you time. This, on the other hand, 1-800-RESPECT is pure feminist man-hate. Do not use 1-800-RESPECT. The only services listed there are male behaviour changing services. Oh, ah, backwards. Okay, this is um, just something to top us out with because, you know, free thinking and all that shit. Until you stop defining things in opposition to other things, you won't be a free thinker. The test of a first-rate intelligence is the ability to hold two opposed ideas in mind at the same time and still retain the ability to function. And I don't give a fuck who made that quote. It's bullshit. Uh, free thinking is a parag par paragon shift in how you think and not just the way you justify belief yeah I, I'm, I'm calling it out that's a load of shit to me that sounds like a fixed position all right i don't think not being able to form a fixed position on something is a fixed position in itself i think being able to shift from a fixed position is fine but not being able to hold any fixed position that's bullshit. That's not free thinking. In fact, that's that's lazy. And we'll get on to that. Here's my comment. Not buying it. This rules out having freely thought about something and having formed an opinion based on your knowledge of both sides of the argument. I'm not saying you can't rethink your position, just that in the interim, you can have a position. I, for instance, am an atheist because no proof or argument of the existence of God of a god makes the existence of one seem important, relevant, or even possible. I am not here to dream up gods for people, just to shoot them down. So, in the wake, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to elaborate on that. My atheism is a lack of belief. I don't have to go and imagine gods to not believe in. What I do is I take ones that are presented to me by other people. I look at the evidence they're willing to provide, or the arguments they're willing to provide, and I deny the value of those things. But I'm not here to create gods. That's not my business. That's theist business. So I, I just sort of cover that because it's a, it's an important part of what atheism is that a lot of people just seem to brush over and not, not be able to um, add to their arguments. Um, so in the wake of theistic failure... I choose to be atheist, but have one drop by and say hello any time and I may change my mind. Any god up to snuff would know how to change my mind. 
It's an old argument that came up a long time ago, but this is true. If a God is a God, that God in knowing all and being able to do all and all that other crap that God's meant to do should be able to prove to me without a doubt that it is a God. It will know what to do. Uh, my having decided on a position does not rule out my having examined both sides and no, I do not count agnosticism as an answer. If you wish to hold the middle ground, go for it, but you'll not make me consider your position a sceptical one, just a lazy one. People have tried to prove and argue the case for God. Uh, I'll go back a tick. It's not always a lazy one. I have said that there, but it's not always the case. Um, some people just don't want to give religion the time, or they want to have it in the back of their mind that it is a possibility, and I don't really give a shit if you want to do those things. But to people who uh, do consider the religion argument, or want to get into arguments about religion with atheists and theists, and say, but I'm an agnostic, you're a lazy fuck. You really haven't given it the time. You haven't formed an opinion. Um, and until you do, no respect. Uh, people have tried to prove and argue the case for a god, any god. The material is there for your consideration. Exactly the case I just made. Personally, I would prefer if you believed at least it's honest. Could I also make this counterpoint to the original argument quickly? If you can make this statement with any surety, you may not be critically thinking through the position you've taken. You've assumed there is only one position for a free thinker to take in any situation. You may not be holding two positions overly well. You may not be the genius you think they are, you are. And this is my argument that being able to hold two contrary positions at the same time and not forming an opinion is not free thinking. It's just not thinking. Uh, if you can't think your way to a um, position on something, that's fine. But if that position is fairly easy to formulate, then sure, take a position. I don't have to imagine your God exists just because you say so. Just because somebody thinks that that makes me more free thinking. I don't buy that shit. Just saying, maybe you are intelligent. Maybe you are intelligent. People have been led up the garden path before now, but think about it if you can. So this is me on social media. This is the fun times I have, the wonderful joys I get out of the experience. Um, and I thought I'd just show you some of that, just to give you an idea of what pops, pops up in my feed and the sorts of commentary I make, because uh, what you're going to see here in video is a very small part of anything in my life. Um, so I'll do my best to give you whatever I can, but I thought I would show you some of the stuff you're going to have missed. Uh, for now, I am going to call this quits. Did I manage to get it long enough for the, you know... The, the YouTube algorithms and shit. I did indeed. Wow, I didn't expect that. First time I tried this, I couldn't get it over the 15 minute. Anyway, uh, I've been the anti-theocrat. Uh, may your gods remain fictional. And I will see you in the next one.